know, when I think about what's made this program the premier program in the state for decades now, it's really a couple of different things. For starters, it's just consistent excellence. Other programs have had great runs for a handful of years, but no one has sustained it for decade after decade after decade. And this is something that started back in the 80s and almost immediately became the best program in the state and has stayed there now for four decades. Cape Elizabeth is a great place to live, it's a great place to work, it's a great place to raise your kids, and you know, it's such a great community. I think that's probably the best thing about Cape Elizabeth is the community aspect of it. Small, tight-knit community. We have a wide variety of community members from people who've been here for generations and generations, started small farms and, and fishing, um, all the way to new people who have moved in for all the great offerings that Cape Elizabeth has. A little over 10,000 people, we, kind of know everyone in town and that's a great part of it. So for me, I just think when you're in a community that has something excellent to offer, I think everybody wants to be part of that excellence and they want to be part of that tradition. I think that uh, it's just really important to be uh, for people to be part of something bigger than themselves. And I think at Cape Elizabeth High School, that is lacrosse. It starts yeah, with uh, a love of lacrosse that um, is apparent just to anyone who drives through towns. There's probably more lacrosse goals in people's yards than in any other town in Maine. I think it starts at a pretty young age for kids. Trying to in, instill that excellence in everyone, I think it comes from you know, being very good from a very early time in our lacrosse history. My junior year, Charlie Birch comes in and, and he was a uh, the quiet, you know, no nonsense coach. He was here a long time and he was a he was a culture builder. I would say the standards were set by Coach Birch when he was here um, and began an incredible run of what, 11 state championships in a row. Um, and we were the top team in Maine and usually we were one of the top teams in New England and he had things that he liked to do a certain way and made sure our kids were doing that each and every day. There was um, a huge emphasis on stick skills and transition when a lot of teams were focused on like your 6v6 offense. And he was like, look, if we run up and down the field faster than anybody else, we're gonna score more goals than anyone else. And it's still the same today in lacrosse. I mean, I think that the standard was if you have good stick skills, you've got to make them better. If you have great stick skills, you've got to make them better. And that still holds true with these guys. You don't know anything when you're in high school. You think you do, but you don't. And, um, and discipline and doing things the right way and being the right kind of person, you know, that's, that's what's important about sports. You know, that's what sports are there to teach. And Charlie Birch was that kind of guy. Charlie Birch was a foundation. Ben's taken it to a, another level. He understands the kids of the town. We both grew up here, and that's really helpful to understand the pressures that go along with being in the program. Um, but we also have a lot of passion for it, and, and there's no one more passionate about the sport than, than Ben Raymond. Well, since 1998, I've been the head coach here, and um, we've enjoyed every single minute of it. So I started uh, playing uh, freshman year, must have been 1984. Um, played four years here. We had one state championship, first one ever, 87. Went to college and then came back in 1994. I think I became the JV coach. And then in 1998, I became the head coach. And now Coach Raymond comes to the table.
wants the kids here to do well. He wants them to come to succeed. He wants them to have a good time. And it's hard to balance out the expectations of winning on a regular basis with having a good time and succeeding and knowing if it's not a title in the end of the year, um, there are still great things that happen. Out of, out, out of every 10 coaches, there's about one or two good coaches. And I think that's what Cape Elizabeth has had. Is it's always had guys who are teachers, right? And, they, and teachers are the best coaches because they know how to take care of kids. I think having a youth program in place, and again, I'll go back to, to Dave Halligan in the soccer world, um, his foundations for his great programs are always starting kids young and getting them involved in the program and having them enjoy being there. And I think uh, year after year, we do that. Our, our kids in the program now work with the younger kids. Our youth coaches are engaged and excited. We're lucky enough now to have a lot of former players back living in the area um, who want to be involved and want to coach and want to bring the knowledge they've learned to the kids in the town. And so it makes a huge difference. You're not starting at square one. And these concepts have been passed down from, from Charlie Birch long ago all the way up to the kids that we're working with now. So as much as the game has changed and evolved, there are some basics there that, that kids really need to learn. And having that in place really makes a big deal for us. It's not necessarily about teaching you know, quality lacrosse skills that are going to last a lifetime for them. It's more about teaching that playing lacrosse is so much fun than anything else that they can do in the spring. They love hanging out with the big guys and they see how much fun our guys have just working with them and I think that is a, a key aspect. Because just the fact that these high schoolers are there that have woken up in the morning I think sets an awesome example for these kids that they're going to someday get to do this and, then, and that just sets this snowball effect of showing up putting in the effort, get to interact with the older guys, and then one day you're an older guy, and you kind of get to exemplify what you saw as a kid. If I'm playing something and there's a score, I'm going to compete. I mean, otherwise, let's get rid of the scoreboard and then just have some fun. So that mentality, and you do it with a certain kind of way so that the kids aren't feeling the pressure and it's all about winning and, and all that good stuff. but but ultimately, you know, it's what you're trying to do, it's win. So that spirit, that competitive spirit, that fire, that fuel is instilled in these kids at a very young age. So when you do that over an extended period of time, by the time these kids get into junior high school, right, they're, they're prepared to, to play this game at a certain level. How do you feel? Yeah. How do you feel? Yeah. There's no other program in the state that has the feeling of family and community and how much this means to the community of Cape Elizabeth. Everyone drives around with a Cape Lacrosse magnet on their car and it says pride and tradition and it's a prideful feeling like you're, you've made it into high school. One, you can drive and then you're on the lacrosse team so you can represent that. And then tradition, you're representing a uh, 30-year legacy of awesome athletes and, and kids to come through a program, be coached by great coaches, and then to even come, come and be coaches again. The pride that goes along with the program is something that I feel each and every day as someone who works within the town and works within the school system. I know Ben feels it as well, but that, that emanates throughout, again, a, a wide variety of the population of the town. For anyone who's been involved with the program has helped its success. It becomes part of, you know, individual families and then people become part of the Cape Elizabeth Lacrosse family and, and stay right in it and stay connected and help promote it and, and support it. I mean, how many brothers and fathers and sons have been involved over the years. You know, I think of the Thorak brothers coming through, uh, Ben Raymond and Charlie Carroll getting to coach their own sons to championships. Uh, Jeff Thorak, the athletic director, who's such a big part of the program, you know, with his boys coming here, winning championships, being all Americans. There's no other community that has that. You know, I, I can only imagine what it's like being a young kid coming to a Cape Lacrosse game, thinking, I can't wait till I can get out here and, and be a star player, and then getting to live that reality. High expectations, a history, a tradition of people kind of expecting us to do well, rising those expectations, not falling underneath the weight that they come with, um, has been a really big deal. And it's hard to manage at times as coaches. You want the best for the kids, but sometimes it's really challenging when there's a lot of weight to win on your shoulders. And we try and manage that as best we can. Um, and, and luckily we've had kids who come in ready to play, excited about it, and take that pressure on, deal with it, and really, really excel under that pressure.
it wasn't that long ago when there was just one class in lacrosse. Uh, prior to 2006, there was just one class, and of course back then Cape Elizabeth won almost every single championship. 2006, we went to Class A and Class B, and uh, you know that really was a period highlighted by great rivalries with Yarmouth and Falmouth, and some fabulous state games, some fabulous regional finals, and more often than not, Cape found a way to win those games too. And now here we are, lacrosse has improved and grown so much, we now have three classes, Class A, Class B, and Class C. Cape Elizabeth's moved up to the biggest class, Class A, and they haven't gotten over the hump yet. That's really the last thing, the last feather in the cap of the program that hasn't been achieved yet, but it's, it's oh so close. So ever since we moved to Class A, we haven't won a state championship in three years. Um, one of those years has been COVID, three years, three years, and that's really a drought in Cape Elizabeth. And this year we need to change that. We need to change that we are a Class A team and we deserve to be a Class A team. We can compete kind of with the big schools, even with the size of our school. Do the line, do the line. Yeah, white, white, you white. the second quarter um, kind of got off to a slow first quarter and I was running down the field off a of clear I just kind of stepped back foot kind of slipped out under me and I just kind of hesitated and it was something like I'd never felt before and I, I'd heard enough people talk about tearing an ACL that I, I just kind of knew when I did it I went down and it was just like right away I knew something was wrong and I, and I feel really good right when I walked off. And he asked me to do, he did a couple things on my knee just to test it out. And the final thing he asked me to do was do a squat. And I, I couldn't do the squat. Like it just felt really flimsy. So he held me back. Um, I sat on the bench for 20 minutes and then 20 minutes later I could hardly stand. It, it was a tough car ride home. Um, and it all kind of started to hit just for the season um, because we knew, I mean, since the minute I moved to Cape, we'd been talking about this year and this season and like the potential we had. So this year was just that much bigger and that much more important to us.
after the TA game, I kind of had to step into that role of being on the field always as a midfielder and on the offensive side of the ball. And it really just helped me adjust and kind of step up. I, I knew, knew what I had to do and try to fill his role. That was end of end of regular season. Good way to finish. Real now season. we get ready starting tomorrow. We get ready for the playoffs. Real season, yeah. boys. Real season, boys. Let's go. Keep on three, one, two, three. Hey. Finishing off the season 12 and 0 with a big win versus Scarborough. I think it gives us a lot more confidence going into playoffs. But we also have to think that every team's going to be different. They're all going to bring a different type of edge, and we basically have a bullseye on our back. Going into playoffs now, this is when business starts, this is when the game starts, this is when every every little thing counts. So we're really not taking it lightly. We're going to have foot on the gas pedal 24-7, going 100% in practice, out of practice, in games, whenever we have to. Just get that state championship. Uh, you know, when I was a sophomore, I didn't really quite understand uh, how much being a senior entails and involves. Um, just from graduation, grad, grad parties, and grad practice. It's like this past week, it's been a lot of work just bouncing around from everything. But um, we're finally kind of got past that now. I have a little bit more time to focus up for playoffs, which I think will be a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Cape Elizabeth High School graduating class of 2021. <laughs> Ten days. That's so short. It's about five months. We have like obviously this game, and then we have a game Friday or Saturday this week, and then like on Wednesday or Monday or Tuesday. So it's just like it's right away, and it's over like that. Your 
You know, you go from one thing to practice, then to a game, and you kind of have to remember, like, you can't be out too late, you have a game the next day or practice, and, you know, there's a lot of important stuff to still going on to the end of the season, and we had some bigger games to the end of the season, which were uh, important to do, so um, it was definitely a busy time, but it's now nice that everything's over to really focus on the cross and get to our final goal, which is a state championship. So ground and pound from the first whistle on Hannaford Field all the way till Fitzpatrick Stadium, baby. Yeah. 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 One, two, three, three. Yeah. Here we go, boys. Have a day there. Let's go. Here we go, White. First game of the second season. So if you don't win, we don't move on. All right, hey, let's get after it today. Right, right from the start. First face off to the last. Everything comes up white today. Big ground balls. One, two, three, hey. hit. Be easy, homie. I lay it down. Be easy, homie. Go play. Hey. Gangsta, you can find a sitting on chrome. Hit the clutch, hit the gear, hit the gas, and I'm gone. Yeah. If I can't do it home, it can't be done. Now I'm going to let the champagne bottle pop. I'm going to take it to the top. Show I'm going to make it hot, baby. baby. I'm down for the action. He's smart with his mouth to smack. You hold your strap, you might come back. So yeah. grab him. React like a gangsta, a dollar like a gangsta. Fact. Cause you can hit an homicide to be action. What happened? Oh, no. Look who prepping with the foe. Foe. 20 inch film sitting on low. Pro. Uh -huh. East side, west side, niggas know. Yo, I'm um, no. Go. He did my mama say something really wrong with my brain. Don't rob me, they know I'm down to die for my chain. G unit. Yeah. We get it popping in the hood. G unit. Yeah. I'm waiting on to act like they don't know how to act. I had to sip it too much jack. I blow them off the map with the mat. Thinking it's all rap. To that clap and Doc said it's a rap. It's a rap. If I can't do it, homie, it can't be done. Now I'ma let the champagne bottle uh -huh. pop. I'ma take it to the top. Show I'ma make it hot, baby. Excellent job, guys. Great job to start the playoffs. 1 0, 1 0. Keep it going. Cape on 3, 1, 2, 3. Hey. We have many games that we finish and we win, and we have to talk about the things we didn't do well or we want to get better at, because it's not all about winning most of the time. Um, still to this day, we work through a game and we're looking for that perfect game, and, and every coach does, but you never find it, but you always shoot for it and work towards it. So we haven't had it yet, we haven't played it yet, but every time that we get better in a game and the kids realize they can improve in an area and they do that in the next game, we're getting closer to our goal of playing really well on a regular basis. And four quarters is a lot to ask for high school kids, um, but we push towards that and they know we push towards that. And we're pushing for not the reasons of simply just winning, but simply getting better, knowing that if we get better, we'll end up in the right spot at the end of the year. <laughs> oh. All right, I need the odd numbers down here. Odd numbers. Yeah, like your jersey number. I know, things are getting tough. Gavin's graduated and forgot odds and evens. Yep. Yes, sir. Even, man. Hey, odd you numbers, know stand up. Hmm? Taking a gap here. Junior's. Junior's. Coach Carroll and Coach Raymond, they're definitely unique in the sense that I feel like they almost value like the personal relationships with their players just as much as they do the like coach to player relationship. When I'm talking to them, it's not like forced or it doesn't feel like formal. It's just a casual uh, combo about like anything really. Cliff's throwing dimes. One day on the offensive end, Clifford's all ready to start lighting it up. <laughs> and I think that really translates into like the success as the team because they're not like giving us strict things to follow. It's more of just like advice and things to guide us. But it ultimately gives us like a foundation for us to build off of and uh, kind of do what we want. But if you come up to practice like we did the other day and we're throwing around and it doesn't like on the line and you're just not competitive with yourself to throw good passes every time, then it goes to shit real quick. But when we do that, all of a sudden the ball's snapping around your movement, right? Yeah. So that switch does not get flicked on and flicked off in real life in big games. So you've got to manufacture that in practice that every time I'm going to make a pass, I'm going to hit the stick because the stick's in place to hit it and not just float out there and not worry about it. So when you do that, you get better every day. So that was really good. But just do it to yourself now so that every time the pass will be better and you got to catch every one. And every one counts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Good job, boys. Push that ball, ball on the restraining box as well. Push, push, push. Hey, ball. Get up on him, get up on him. Oh, we'll see you, Noah. We'll see you, Noah. Come on. 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 Just got to know that it's important for you guys just to make sure that you come 
with the same energy, the same enthusiasm that you had yesterday. Yep. All right, yep. it is a playoff game. They are the three seed, you are the two seed. They are 11 and one, you are 12 and 0. Oh. So there's not much difference if you look at record. So we want to make sure that everybody knows what the real difference is at the end of that game. Yes, All right. Okay, here we go. Let's Straight go, boys. Oh, boys. Here we go, Kate. Woo. Here we go, okay. How do you feel? Good. How do you feel? Good. How do you feel? Good. Good. One, two, three. Kate. Kate. Helped us make things, you know, more important than just game day. Everything from, you know, we'd go to Papa Gino's and eat as much pasta as we can eat for 99 cents on Wednesdays and just do fun things like that all throughout the season. And tried to keep a lot of those little things going. You know, Papa Gino's it might not be, but team dinners are kind of the same thing. You know, people have lots of those throughout the season and just keep that same kind of family. So do you think there is an expectation to win a state championship? Um, I do. I think that uh, every year that, um, for as long as I can remember with this program, we've kind of been held to that standard. And I think if we were to be held to any different standard, it'd be kind of unfortunate for not only team, but for the community. Why play season if you're not expecting to win at all? The key for us is doing what we do. All right, if we catch and throw, if we push the ball in transition, if we communicate on defense, if we share the ball offensively, then we're going to be great. You know exactly what we're asking you to do. Every aspect of this game, we dominate. You understand? Yeah. All right, limited amount of games left. Let's make sure every one of them is our best game. Let's, Let's get after it. Keep on three, one, two, three. Okay. Expectation to uh, win states in Cape. I feel in the past it was that way, and then we we've lost the past threes. People have kind of forgotten that a little bit, and I hope to bring that that expectation back, as it's a great expectation to be known for and uh, have in the back of your head.
So I've been on varsity since freshman year, and both freshman and sophomore year, we lost to TA in the regional finals. Um, being on those two teams uh, with the seniors going out was really tough. Um, being on those bus rides home or the locker room was, you know, tough to say goodbye to those seniors. As a senior, you, you know, it's, you don't want to go out on a loss. You want to go out as a happy, you know, happy ending, happy victory, um, and not go out, you know, maybe tears in the bus, but hopefully we can win that last game. I mean, this year's regional final is certainly unique. There were so many regional finals against Falmouth over the years. The last two seasons, you played TA for the first time. Now you're playing a team you really don't know anything about, Berwick Academy, who for one year is part of the MPA, and uh, they, they have a great team. They're the number one seed in Class A South. Even with your 12-0 record, you're still the two seed in their one. So it certainly poses an interesting, unique, unprecedented challenge uh, to have to go down and play a, a prep school team on their field uh, with a trip to the state final at stake. You've done a great job all season long of preparing yourself for each and every game that we've played. The same thing happens on Tuesday. Your goal is the state championship, but you can't get there without winning the game on Tuesday. All right, so the two game Tuesday is the most important game of the season. You win that, then the next game becomes the most important. But you've got to take care of Tuesday before anything else. One of the big things is you've got to stay out of any BS with them. Just play lacrosse. Three passes and it's in the back of the net. All right, that's what we'll talk in our game. Nothing we say, just a number at the end of the day. That's what we focus on. Ooh, okay. Got it? Head of field. Good. Head of field. Good. Head of field. Good. 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 One, two, three. Hey. You know, we got a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. Uh, we finished the regular season 12 and out. Uh, we were given the two seed. Uh, and we feel like that's not really an accurate representation of uh, how our season uh, was. We're going to have to travel down to Berwick and uh, prove why uh, we deserve that one seed. You've come this far, you've earned where you are. All right, everything you've done all year has gotten you to this point because you're a quality lacrosse team. Pick up every ground ball, dominate the middle of the field, first face off through the last whistle. Cape on three. Let's go. Hey, boys! There we go! Have a great time today. Get after it, enjoy it, and let's kick some ass. One, two, three, Cape! Woo!
Association, I'd like to present this plaque symbolic of the 2021 Southern Maine Regional Boys Class A Lacrosse Champions to Capers of Cape Elizabeth High School. Congratulations. And best of luck in the state tournament this Friday, June 18th, at Patrick Stadium at 7:30. Woo! Hey Charlie! Let's fucking go! You're going to seats, baby! talk really uh, at second half about how important the next two goals are if we score the next two goals game probably ends up like 14 5 or something like that they end up scoring the next two goals and things really start to get tight and they really showed exactly what a championship team does when things aren't working out they find a way to uh, execute and, and adapt in a tough situation to score and hold the other team scoreless and win games and that's exactly what we did and it just demonstrated how some programs and you see it in other levels of sports when all things are equal, that heart and the pride tend to be worth a goal or two that makes a difference. When I was a senior, I remember my last practice before the state championship game. It was hot as heck on Hannaford Field. And I just, I didn't care how hard I worked. I was like, this is my last practice. And I don't care if I have to play tomorrow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up if I have to. I'm going to play so hard because it's so much fun. And getting to just dodge after dodge after dodge and just go for trying to just nail a play down, like those kinds of moments, like t don't take those for granted because they do only come once. You only get one more practice eventually. Set. Find Tiernan, find Tiernan, find Tiernan. Give it to Archie. One more. Save Michael. I'm not scared of him. Just have to make that decision more quickly, Colin, right? So if you're in the spot to shoot, let it fly. If not, you've got to find that open man. That slide's coming. The last practice, the last game on Friday, the last time we can put on the same jersey as each other and play in the same game as each other. It's definitely, it definitely sucks, but it's also, it's awesome because it's kind of something that's come full circle. We've grown since second grade playing lacrosse. We've been together forever now, and it's finally coming full circle. So it's kind of cool. But obviously there's that, that sad part to it where, you, where you're ending your little, your good run with your friends, you know. Hopefully it's going to be a fun game on Friday and we can end it, end it on a good one. You guys, we're super proud of you all year long. Alright, this has been one heck of a season to be part of.
right? Yeah. I think we've all had a really, really good time and it showed every single day. We want to continue that tomorrow. Got it? How do you feel? Good. How do you feel? Good. How do you feel? Feel, feel. Good, good, good. One, two, three, game. So yeah, growing up, my dad used to always tell me stories about his uh, uh, days in Cape Elizabeth and playing lacrosse here. And it really inspired me to play at a young age. I played, in, I started playing in second grade uh, right when I could. And it was cool. He just used to tell me stories about how, you know, he won the first state title and I have the chance to win uh, the 20th. Ah. So meeting Falmouth in the state title game is not anything new to us. Uh, Every one presents different challenges depending on what they have for, for a team and what we've done in the past over the course of the regular season. This year was a little different. We really played well against them in the regular season. Uh, it felt like we were a much better team and that's great in many ways but it also sets up some problems. We want to make sure we're not overconfident going in. We want to make sure the kids are focused and able to execute the things we're trying to ask them to do. Um, and, and overcoming just any kind of sense of this is going to be easy is paramount for us as coaches, but it's hard to overcome when you've beaten a team by a significant score over the regular season. So my hockey coach texted me last night and said, the best team doesn't always win. We know we have a ton of talent and we know what our team can do, but we got we to gotta be ready uh, when the whistle comes, just to keep pushing, finish out the job. Nothing's finished yet. We're preparing them for what comes next in their life. and I truly feel that on the field they learn just as much, maybe even more, that they can use in their regular lives than they do in the classroom each and every day. Uh, I think we teach the kids an awful lot of skills that are very valuable to them later on. And I think that we prepare a lot of kids to go on and play lacrosse at the next level. Um, so judging success on just one game at the end of the year um, is something I try not to do anymore. But it, but it is think, much more successful if we win state championship at the end of the year. <laughs> Good evening and welcome into Fitzpatrick Stadium here. We are on site to play the boys Class A state championship. We've got two longtime rivals. Cape Elizabeth comes into this one 15 and 0. They're the number two seed in the South region. And Falmouth comes in as the top seed in the North region. Right from the beginning, first face off to the last whistle. Everything's 100%. Every ground ball is Cape. Every goal's backed up. We play hard defense. We communicate offensively. We share the ball and we get after it. Let's go. Let's Have go. a great time. Cape on three, one, two, three. Hey! Hey! Opening face off won by Cape Elizabeth. Hufford, one handed ground ball, scoops it up. A bounce shot. Good save. Charlie Whitney, the senior goaltender, saves the first shot he faces. Over to Lathrop. Cannon Lathrop turns on the Jets here, gets his head free, and rips it top corner. That is a grown man shot right there as Tiernan Lathrop gets tape on the board. Almost picked off by Keegan Lathrop, and he comes away with it. Oh! Colin Campbell! A couple snipes here early on in the game. Lathrop. Lathrop gets through a couple defenders, puts in the back of the net. Picked up. That is Cooper Bush. Bush has the ball ripped out of his stick there by Patterson. There's Caden Lee, and he puts it in the back of the net. And Cape is absolutely rolling here in the first quarter of 4 nothing. Now it's Hufford with a clean win here. Patterson comes up with a good ground ball, skips it over to Frankwitz. Skipped over. McAvoy, Lee finds the top corner. Another clean win here by Hufford. Skips it over McAvoy. McAvoy makes the pass, and Frankwood says, "Why not another?" K 
Campbell, Frankowitz making eight. Scored three goals in 45 seconds. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play as Kate puts up eight goals. Campbell, strong inside, gets his hands free and a low bouncer into the back of the net. Kate does not slow down. Kirk Robozowski, shot and a good save there by Charlie Whitney. Bounce pass again, finds Keegan Lathrop and puts it in. Campbell beats his guy and bounces it, 11 goals. That's a first half hat trick for Colin Campbell. McAvoy skips it over, finds Tiernan Lathrop. Lathrop spins around, tries to get his hands free, gets through a defender, and makes it 12 to 1. Gets a shot off, and it goes into the back of the net. 13 to 1. up with it, skips it over, finds Lathrop, make it 14. Skips it over, quick stick, Cochran denied on the post, and somehow it goes in. Possibly the most impressive half I've ever seen in a state championship game. Kate Elizabeth up 15 to 1 over Falmouth. Let's keep rolling. Mark your plot. The train keeps going. What an amazing performance. We knew this was a great team. Yeah. I think they're, they're trying to make a statement that maybe they're the greatest team of all. This greatest program in the history of the state has one thing missing from its resume, but they're 24 minutes, probably 24 fast minutes from getting that fulfilled. And we finish this thing strong. We don't want to say, hey, you know, the third quarter wasn't that good, but everything else was good. Finish strong so everyone walks out as a senior and says, that's the best game we ever played. And everyone freaking knows it. Hey, all I gotta say 
is the crown's back to the champions. Yeah! Yeah! So winning that, that Class A state title, state title is something we've done now that we hadn't done before, and um, it's another box checked off on, on a storied tradition. Uh, so we're always preparing for the next year. I mean, I think that we enjoy the celebration of winning the state championship, uh, the bus ride back, a parade into town, a huge celebration at the school, and then the next morning we wake up and it's already trying to prepare for next year. Um, we know what we have coming back, but then it's making sure that those kids understand the importance of continuing to play. Um, this field is always open. It's never locked. We always have a bucket of balls available for kids. Goals are always around and available. And we make sure that we encourage these guys not to put their sticks away ever. It's just a matter of execution and, and preparation now that uh, this season's over. We're going to get some nice summer lacrosse in, carry that into the fall with our fall sports, and then ultimately uh, get back to work early next spring and uh, hope to repeat it. So it doesn't ever end. It's always a quest to get better and better and better and put the best possible team we can on the field. I'm in the phone with this one across the hall. If you don't answer, I'll just ring it up the wall. I know she's there, but I just had a call. Don't leave me hanging on the telephone. Don't leave me hanging. I told you all season, this teammate's getting a goal, baby.